as you may or may not know, I made a video a few months back, I've actually last year in September, I think, or last August, um, about my Kindle because I got a Kindle last year for my birthday and right now I've had it for seven months and I want to give you just tips, not really tips, just tell you how I'm liking it and the differences, more differences between the iPad and the Kindle but if you want you can go back and watch that video because I give it more detailed information about the Kindle like what is my Kindle, the functions that it has and some other things so this is just like um, part two of that video so yeah so this is the Kindle that I have and it's the Kindle Paperwhite 11th, if I'm not wrong, the 2022 version and I just have it decorated like this with a lot of stickers and I'll put the stores in here that I bought the stickers from. They are all <laughs> messy right now because it has been just like moving around my uh, bag, so yeah. And then this is my iPad and I have the 9th gen iPad I think that it's called. I always get the models of the iPads confused but yeah, it's this one in dark grey and I bought it um, two years ago uh, because of Procreate. I did a lot of, I still do some digital drawing, this is actually not mine, um, but I do some digital drawing and the Procreate was just a must for me. As you can see, and I did compare that on my last video, the size between these are just quite the difference. <laughs> In terms of size, for me, this is just way easier to carry around since I can throw it in my bag and I have one of those like banana bags or whatever it's called. So this just fits it perfectly amongst with other things that I carry on my bag, even my glasses case. Um, so I just really prefer this size, especially since the thickness of it. It's like um, a very thin paper bag. Like for example, I do have this book, which is Kim Ji Young Born 1982. And as you can probably or probably not see, it's still thinner than uh, 100 and something page a uh, book. For the iPad, I think it's way less handy to carry around. Uh, maybe if you have like an iPad mini 6, um, it's easier because, you know, the size is basically the size of the Kindle, so that is handier to carry around. Uh, but I still prefer the Kindle since this is really heavy, like this is really really heavy and it only fits in one of my bags, no two of my bags because they are the bigger ones, but I don't really like to carry big bags all the time, especially in the summer, so the Kindle is way handier to carry around. So for the screen type, as you can see, like this does reflect some of the glare, but like, to be honest, I have a lamp right here on my face. Uh, but other than that, you can see that it doesn't really like reflect other lights. And if I turn it on, you can see that even if you put your hand over it, you can see like the shadow of my hand, see? Uh, because it really is in looks, like uh, paper, like paper, normal paper, an actual book, and that's why I really like it, especially to read outside. And it's not as harsh on your eyes. And I'm wearing contacts, but I usually do wear glasses. But since I'm wearing contacts, I get my like my eyes get even more tired if I'm looking at a screen. So for example, I noticed that if I'm going on my phone a lot with my contacts on, uh, my eyes will get like really dry and tired. But if even if I'm reading on my, um, not iPad, <laughs> even if I'm reading on my Kindle for even say like an hour or more, my eyes do not get as tired with my contacts on than they would if I would was reading on my phone or my Kindle because it does have an, you know, an, not an LCD, what it's called, like AGD screen. It has an AGD screen. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, like the lights reflect much, much more, like everything reflects even the lights in the ceiling and yeah, it's just way harsher. And also the Kindle does have a matte finish paper like and the iPad, unless you get like um, 
what's it called a screen screen protector that it's matte it will always look like this just very shiny and i don't like it and also i showed this on my last video but on the kindle you can just turn up the warmth and also the brightness i know you can also turn on the turn up the brightness in your ipad but i think that this is just way better and this is just key for me because most times i'm reading without my glasses uh, and without contacts when i'm getting ready for bed and if i don't have neither the contacts or the glasses my eyes are just like unprotected <laughs> from all of the blue lights it really helps that my kindle can really turn up the warmth on the screen because my eyes will not get sore or get tired oh and also one big tip like put the font really big <laughs> if you're reading without your glasses on because you will be able to see everything like it really really helps <laughs> Okay, so for battery, I charged my Kindle on one and a half week ago, I think, before I went on vacation. So it wasn't last Friday, it was the other before, and today is Tuesday, and it's at 45% as you can see and i've been reading a lot on it like a lot a lot <laughs> i've been using it every single day um but this will still last love for like another week and a half so that makes three weeks and three weeks is really really good because on the ipad i do use it for other stuff but i haven't been using it all that much and i did charge it on i think it was on the second day of our vacation so it was not last sunday the other sunday um and then i didn't use it besides while it was charging to just watch a couple of episodes episodes what <laughs> a couple of episodes of gilmore girls so besides that i haven't been using it at all and the battery is already like at 30 38 oh, can you even see 38% and I haven't been using it so yeah it just goes down really low and if I'm reading uh it will last me like what a day maybe two but then it'll just shut off okay so also in terms of focusing on reading I think that the kindle is helping me so much with focusing like so so much um even the fact that i'm be um, able to put like the font bigger it really really helps because especially when i'm reading small font books i just get like i feel like i'm reading this forever <laughs> even if i enjoy the book because i hate small font it's just my eyes hate it i get all the letters confused it's just it's awful awful um, so for example, for a Tempest of Tea, the font is really, really small. It's not like extremely small, but it's smaller than what I'm used to. So I just, I'm reading it on my Kindle and then annotating my physical copy. But the Kindle really helps me focus because unlike my phone or my iPad, I do not have any notifications, like at all. I cannot check my social media. I cannot check notifications. Uh, nothing pops up. I don't even have ads on it because I got the ad-free version. So it's amazing. <laughs> if I'm on my iPad, I will just be like, hmm, I could easily go on YouTube right now. Or, or I'm just like reading and then I read about something and I'm like, hmm, I should totally look this up. And then I look it up and I just get distracted. And it's a whole cycle, like, believe me. The Kindle has helped me so, so much with my focus. Even when I'm reading a physical book, I feel that I'm not as focused on it as I am when I'm on my Kindle because I don't know, my brain is like, you're holding this electronic device. So, yeah i don't know how to explain this okay so and then you have on kindle you have the kindle store or the amazon kindle shop um and i do also have kindle unlimited and do i think it's worth it or not it depends because you do have a lot of books on it uh but you have to want to be interested in those books that are available on it because if you're not like um if you see that you're like 
looking for books on kindle unlimited and you see like oh, i'm not interested in any of these like just cancel your subscription and then if you want later you can reactivate reactivate it uh so it's fine but i do have a kindle unlimited subscription because i have a lot of books on there that i want to read and like besides the um, the most popular books because you also have popular books on there and also ones that are less known and I really like that because I got to know like less known books through Kindle Unlimited. I think that besides Kindle Unlimited, you have a very, very wide um, set of options on Kindle Store. And you do have good prices, but compared to Apple Books, I think that most times Apple Books do have better prices than Kindle Store. Because, for example, I got the House on the Cerulean Sea audiobook for like, what was it, like 8 euros or something like that, which is really, really inexpensive for an audiobook. One downside is if you buy books on uh, the Apple Books app, you cannot transfer them to Kindle, so that's the downside. But you know, if you get a Kindle and if you are interested in the Kindle store, that's also a plus. And you also have access to Libby on your Kindle, not access to the Libby app, but you can just transfer your Libby books to your uh, Kindle, which I do. Uh, so that's very, very useful as well. So for questions, I have like, should I buy the Kindle if I already have an iPad? And I say it depends because like if the iPad size uh, just bothers you, you should get a Kindle because for real, the size is just way lighter and just way smaller. So way better. Uh, is your iPad like hurting your eyes if you notice that your eyesight is getting like really really strained from looking at your iPad too much uh, just while you're reading? I definitely suggest a Kindle because like I said I noticed a huge difference when I was reading on my iPad and when I'm reading on my Kindle so that's also a question that you can put like and cause to buy it or not do you want to spend that extra money because if you buy a kindle a kindle uh mine was 179 without the ads uh but there are other ones cheaper ones for like 139 or something and then you have the more expensive ones like the kindle script and something that go up to 200 and whatever i never really searched that up but it's up to you if you have that budget, if you want to spend it on that. And yeah, that, that part is like up to you. Do you want to spend that extra money? If yes, do get the Kindle. If you're like, mm, I do prefer to spend this extra money on another thing and I'm just like comfortable reading on my iPad, don't get it. You don't need it. Another question is if you don't have neither a Kindle nor an iPad, you have to think to yourself like, do I want this only for reading or do I want it for something else like editing videos, uh, just going on YouTube, social media, procreate, study? Because if you want to do other stuff like that, you should definitely get an iPad because the Kindle, you can only read on it. You can do anything else. So definitely get an iPad if you want to do other stuff stuff on there so then you have also your budget if you want to spend less or have a smaller budget you can just go for the kindle because it's way cheaper than an ipad uh my ipad wasn't as expensive as it was supposed to be it was 3.99 euros and my kindle was 179 but usually ipads can go up to 1000 and something euros so it's quite the difference so also budget again is something that you really should consider what is best for you in terms of how much money you want to spend so another thing that you have to consider is the screen. Do you like a smaller screen? Do you mind a black and white screen? Do you mind a just a general smaller matte screen? If you don't, just go for the Kindle. But if you do mind those stuff, especially the black and white, it does get some use to, but it's just only the covers because besides the covers, uh, if the book doesn't have like any illustrations like a graphic novel that is colored, you won't notice anything. So 
if that's something that doesn't bother you, go for the Kindle. If it bothers you, just go for the iPad. So the last topic I want to talk about is my review of my Kindle after seven months, almost eight of use. And to be honest, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm just loving it so much. I do not regret buying it a single bit. I prefer this over my paperbacks. Like sometimes I do prefer the paperbacks because I want to like fill the book and annotate it. Uh, but other than that, this just I can take this anywhere. I can take as many books as I want in this. Right now I'm reading two books, which are The Tempest of Tea and also Mistborn. And Mistborn is like a chunk. It's like over 600 pages. So as you can tell, like it's a big book. I wouldn't be carrying around those two books in my bag. So Kindle, Kindle. I went on vacation. I didn't know what to read. Kindle. I'm going to the beach. I don't want to get my books, just all of get sand on them and just get them wet. Kindle. Although you have to still be careful with this, you know, it's like, be careful. Like, imagine me carrying this, where is it? This around. This is over 700 pages or over 800 pages. And it's a hardback. Of course, I will be reading it all this. Why did I buy it? Because it was cute. And it was secondhand. And it was on sale. Yeah. So, yeah, that is the end of the video. I really hope you liked the second part. And I hope that I could make some more questions that you had clearer. And right now, we're just going to read on our Kindle and we're going to bed. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow me on my social media.